Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, we will be creating a flat animation using a Iron Man vector. And this is what we'll be creating. All right, so at the end of the day, you should be able to take away a lot of uses for this tutorial. You can create this for basically any sort of you know character animation you're doing or really any flat animation that you want to do. Um, just in this case, I wanted to uh, use uh, you know an Iron Man vector because this tutorial was requested from uh, one of my subscribers and uh, I want to say thank you very much for the request. And guys, if you have any requests for tutorials, please drop a comment or hit me up on my social networks. Links in the description. You can download this project file in the description. This is a two-part tutorial series. Right now, we'll be doing the After Effects portion and how to create this vector should be coming out the next day after I release uh, this animation video. So please check the description if you want to learn how to create this vector. So what I'll do is I'll import our Iron Man vector and this will pop up and make sure you uh, have composition uh, checked off and click OK. And now we can see all the layers from Illustrator and if you do create your own uh, vector, be sure to separate each of the elements that you want to animate. Um, or it'll just be one file if you don't do that. And you know, you can't really animate one file that becomes a pain. So anyway, uh, the first thing I want to do just for you know good practice is to center all the anchor points in this image. So uh, let's go ahead and, and I'm just going to probably run right through this. So I'll just solo each layer as I uh, go around, just trying to center the anchor point in each uh, layer. So I'll be right back and, you know, just center them. There's really, it's not really hard. Just, you know, let's see what I'm doing. Just center them and uh, things will be ready to go. Um, and see you guys in a second. So I've centered all the anchor points for the objects. Um, and I forgot to say, if you, you have to use the pan behind tool, which is right up here. Um, but really it's not necessary to do it for all the layers. We're just, we just really need it for the uh, eyebrows, which are right here. So, but it's a good practice. So make sure to do it because you never know what you're gonna do. But anyway, the next thing to do is let's turn on motion blur for all the layers before we forget to do that. And it'll become a pain a little bit later because we'll be pre-comping and let's not forget to do it. So turn on uh, motion blur. And now since we have everything set up, let's go ahead and start animating and doing some fun stuff. So what I'll do is I'll just turn off all these layers except for the main circle. And what I'll do is select that layer and I will go here and create a mask. And let's see, just kind of try to create like a, you know, right angle, like 90 degrees mask. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that, but, uh, oh, you see, you want to at least be able to cut a pie. Don't cut off the edge like I did. All right. So now we have created our little right angle mask. What we'll do now is we'll duplicate this layer, hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation, and we'll type in 90 degrees. And now we've rotated over here, and let's go ahead and do that again. Duplicate main circle two, and we have main circle three, and hit R on our keyboard, let's type in 180. And now we have that, and let's do it again. Duplicate that, and type in uh, 270 for rotation. And we're just left with this little point, but that's not a big deal, nothing to worry about. So now we've cut the circle into fours, and let's go ahead and select all four of these layers, move to like one second, hit R on our keyboard, and also hit S on our keyboard while holding down shift to bring up the scale and rotation properties. And let's click the stopwatch for all those, and let's move to the beginning of our timeline here, and let's type in zero, actually, sorry, let's start offsetting the rotation, uh, and you can just be random about it. It doesn't... There's really no uh, you know, perfect form or anything we have to do. So let's go ahead and just offset these. And if we look over here, boom, this is coming in. And then uh, let's make sure all four layers are selected and select scale and type in zero. So now we have this. So let's go ahead and select all of these end keyframes, hit F9 on our keyboard to create an easy as keyframe. And then let's also maybe move these in just by a little bit. Wait, it's a little bit quicker. And then let's go ahead and offset these to create some separation in our animation. All right. And then to add a little bit more uh, variation, let's go ahead and go to Effect, uh, Generate, Fill. And uh, it doesn't matter which one you do it on, just you know whatever you want to do. And then let's change the color of this to like a lighter color. Um, and then let's actually, so we have a start off light and then let's go to like one second and then let's select the dark red and make sure to add keyframes. So now it comes on light and then it you know stops. So you have some little bit of separation. Let's actually move that front keyframe a little bit forward 
and maybe a little bit back like that. So there we go. And then once again, we'll just select the keyframes here with the fill effect, and then we'll just paste it on like, uh, you know, two. And then let's go to the front keyframe of fill, of the fill uh, effect, and let's go ahead and just change the color to something a little bit darker. And let's go ahead and uh, offset that by a little bit by dragging the front keyframe out. And maybe we'll do it one more time, who knows? Do it to like three. So I copied and pasted it, and we'll go ahead and change the color of this to maybe a richer red. All right, that's that's looking really good. All right, so now that we have these done, let's go ahead and just make sure to maybe change the color of it to separate it from everything else. Now we're here with the fill circle, and let's turn that on. And you know what I'll do is, we'll see, we want it to come on, be done right there. So let's hit S on our keyboard to bring up scale and move it forward to like, you know, 19 frames and hit zero. And let's also go to uh, Effect Transition Venetian Blinds. Okay, so then let's uh, hit the stopwatch for transition completion. I'll hit U on my keyboard to see that extra uh, keyframe. Uh, move forward in time, or backward in time to our beginning of our scale and put this to 100%. So now this will come on just like that. And it's really interesting. And then we'll just hit, it's like the last keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard. And now that's looking pretty cool. All right, so now we have to animate uh, the mask. So, so here I have the mask, and then I also have a shade. So we want to like cut this in half, this little piece in half here. Um, so what we'll do is go to the pen tool, and let me just lock the shade so I don't accidentally click on that. So what we'll do is maybe like we'll zoom in here and really try to you know put a point right on the uh, you know, center of this, you know, the cutoff here, and move all the way down to the bottom of the mask, and hold down shift on our keyboard, and click right off, and then, as you can see, we have a straight line, and then we'll just go around the mask just like this, we'll click a bunch of points, and click right there, and then we'll hit M on our keyboard, uh, under mask one, click subtract. So now we have successfully cut this in half. Okay, so now let's go ahead and animate this part coming on, and let's unlock this layer. And all we have to do is, let's go ahead and let's see what we want to stop. Let's say we want it to be done like right here. Okay, we'll hit P on our keyboard for position, hit the keyframes, then move backward in time. Actually, you know, let's move these forward just a little bit more. And let's put this right here. And then let's hit the X position for this and move this off the circle. And then for this side, Let's go ahead and move that off circle as well. So on both sides, we'll add some separation. All right, so let's go to main circle and let's duplicate that layer and let's drag it up underneath our uh, mask layers up here. And let's hit M on our keyboard under circle, main circle five and delete the mask one. And now let's go ahead and pre-compose both of our mask layers here by going up to layer pre-compose and we'll just call this mask and click okay. And then let's put the mask layer under the main circle five layer. And under track mat, click alpha mat. And if you don't see this, these options, make sure to click toggle switches. And so now our mask just kind of comes on from the side. And that's looking pretty good. And there's one detail that I forgot, which is right here. Um, and you know what we'll do just to make that simple is once this comes on right here, let P in our keyboard, and let's say that's where we want the, well, let's just move it forward a little bit and move back just a little bit. And then we'll just position this down. So now that this little detail is just gonna come up and make sure to make the last keyframe easy as. And did I even make these easy as as well? Make sure you make uh, the mask layers easy as. Sometimes I forget things. All right, so now things are looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and animate the shadows. So I have several shades in here, I have five layers. Let's go ahead and just put those at the top turn them on and here is our shadows and uh, let's go ahead and animate these. So I'll select all five layers, hit P on our keyboard, stop, click the stopwatch for position. Let's move that forward in time and simply put, I'll probably just see what we do. Just drag that off the side there, you know, and just move in the X positions on these. And then I'll move the Y. So now we have this. 
and then hit F9 on our keyboard, select all the keyframes at the end, and hit F9 on our keyboard to create an easy as keyframe. And then let's go ahead and just offset some of these. You know, nothing in, you know, no particular order, just messing around with it, creating some variation, some details. All right, and let's actually let's see. Let's move all these keyframes uh, forward in time so we can keep, you know, the pacing of this animation, you know, consistent. All right, so now all we have to do is just pre-compose all five of these layers. So I'll pre-compose these layers and we'll call it uh, shade or I'll call it shading. So now we have to create an alpha mat and I'll duplicate our mask layer and I'll bring that to the top here and hide that layer. So now these will come on just like that. And then actually see, we have to cut the uh, shading layer. So we'll go right here and we'll just go to the end point of the shading layer and just drag that layer forward. So now we don't see it. And then once that stops, the animation will come on. And it's actually, uh, just move this forward just by a little bit. There we go. So now we'll do some of the eyebrows. I'll go ahead and turn those on. And let's see, let's have them come on as the shading comes on there. So what I'll do is I'll hit S on my keyboard and also hit Shift R to bring up the rotation. Uh, click the stopwatches and then uh, let's move back in time a little bit and let's just really rotate these things. So I'll rotate that way. I'll go in the negative values for this one and then uh, hit zero on my keyboard for the scale. So those will just come on and let's hit easy as F9 on our keyboard for easy as and then let's just offset these. So now we're really rolling on this thing. You know, things are, you know, coming on, bam, bam, bam. All right, so what we got left, let's add some of that detail. So we have uh, this top detail, which is taking forever to load up, but there it is. And then we also have a divider, which is some reason taking a long time to load up, but no big deal. So let's see, let's start with the divider real fast. And this it will be real quick. Hit S on our keyboard for scale. Let's move that forward in time and hit zero on our keyboard uh, for scale. And it's taking forever. All right, and it'll actually just come on like a line that's being drawn on since it's just a line and you really won't notice that it's starting from the center, but that's pretty cool. Um, and then for the top detail, I'll just do a little cool you know animation to it. So maybe I'll move forward by a little bit. Hit P for, uh, hit the stopwatch for position, move that forward in time. And we'll just drag this down just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll pre-compose this and uh, we'll just call it top detail mask. And then I will go to the rectangle tool up here and just draw out a mask like that. And now if we move forward in time, it kind of just comes in like that. And that's pretty interesting. So all we have left to do now is the uh, eyes. So let's start with the visor here, which I, I don't know really what to call that, but I just call it visor because who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what I should have called it. So let's see. Let's start it right here. And all I'm going to do is just to keep it simple, just going to add the scale because I, you know, I'm not that creative. <laughs> so I'm just kind of boring. And all I did there was just put that up. F9, of course. And then let's turn on the eyes. And let's see. We'll have it come in right there. So hit position for both of the eyes. Move that forward in time, let's move that playhead in time. Okay, and then, and then let's uh, move these eyes up just like that. And then let's pre-compose both of these layers and call them eyes. All right, and then let's go to the rectangle mask. Actually, you know what, we'll use the pen tool because we have to be, uh, you know, attention to detail on this one. So what we'll do with the pen tool, with the eyes layer selected, let's click a point right here um, and let's try to keep a close mask and I'm hold and I'm hitting alt on my keyboard to drag these handles back. So uh, do keep that in mind if you're new to the pen tool. And I'm just keeping things, you know, this mask along this line doesn't have to be perfect right here, but just where the eyes are gonna touch uh, the little shade here for the 
uh, visor. And once again, I don't even know what to call that thing. So <laughs> maybe I'm right. I have no idea. And I'm just going to close this up, the mask. There we go. And then I'm going to hit M on my keyboard. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to hit anything. I'm getting a little bit confused here. And then that comes down. Boom. So before we get to my favorite part of the tutorial, uh, where we change the color of the eyes, um, I forgot to do one thing, which was to animate the mouth. I knew I was forgetting something, um, but let's go ahead and just uh, go ahead and animate the mouth. And I'm simply just going to add the scale to this. So, you know, keyframe for scale, you know, put zero and F9 it. So you guys probably could have done that without me for sure. So let's go ahead and do my favorite part of this tutorial and let's change the color of the eyes and add a little animation to that. So select the eyes layer, go to effect color correction tint and click the stopwatch for map white to and move forward in time just by a little bit and click on the white box and you can make it red or I'm just gonna select uh, this color right here. And now we have this, boom. Well, and we'll just create a quick little background just like that and boom. And that looks really good. Um, just this little detail right up here, which I left out and I'll move forward in time right here. And then I'll go to that random detail, which is really random. And then I'll just move that uh, in point in a little bit in the timeline. So it won't be there. So sometimes you gotta do some little cleaning up at the end of your animation. But overall, this looks really good. Uh, of course, the timing is going to come down to where you put the keyframes. Um, but this is the uh, gist of how you do this. And But a good animation always has good pacing. So make sure to work on that. So if you have any questions or requests for a tutorial, please drop me a comment. And if this tutorial has helped you, please drop me a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. And part two will be coming out. Uh, the day after I release this and guys thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you soon.